The clock was ticking, and there was no time to waste. The operation had to be executed according to plan, or the more than 2,000 Filipino and American prisoners held at the Los Banos POW camp would perish at the hands of the Japanese guards. At exactly 4 a.m. on February 23, 1945, the American Filipino task force attacked with ruthless efficiency. The first unit, aboard 54 landing craft, landed near the camp, taking out the Japanese troops without raising the alarms. Almost simultaneously, a company of American paratroopers made their way to the outskirts of the camp, securing the zone from a possible Japanese counterattack. Meanwhile, several recon platoons that had spent the night hidden from the Los Banos camp lights attacked with a combined fire that left the Japanese guards wondering what was happening. As the firefights broke out across the camp with the paratroopers, the recon platoons blasted their way to save the prisoners. Then the report came in. An entire Japanese division had been alerted and was on its way to retake the camp. Liberating the Philippines The Empire of Japan finally seized control of the Philippines in mid-1942, following the valiant last stand of the United States Army forces in the Far East and their Filipino allies on the island of Corregidor. Before departing, General Douglas MacArthur vowed to return and liberate his men and allies from the oppressive Japanese military occupation. However, a lengthy wait lay ahead. In the meantime, Imperial Japanese forces began rounding up American and Filipino prisoners of war, or POWs. Initially, the Rising Sun's troops estimated capturing around 25,000 POWs, making provisions for facilities, food, and guards accordingly. Yet, by the time Japan had consolidated its power in the Pacific, it held over 72,000 POWs, including 9,000 Americans and 43,000 Filipinos. Tragically, more than 20,000 captives perished in the ensuing months due to forced marches, illness, starvation, and Japanese brutality. Despite these heartbreaking losses, the thousands of prisoners under Japanese control still faced deplorable sanitary conditions. As the war progressed, the POW situation worsened, while the Japanese forces struggled to halt the relentless American advance on land, sea, and air. By 1944, the success of the island hopping campaigns finally led General MacArthur to fulfill his promise of returning to the Philippines as a liberator. However, news of U.S. troops landing on Filipino soil prompted Japanese authorities to issue orders to execute all the prisoners from camps at risk of being liberated by the Allies. Los Banos Prison Camp Gruesome incidents, such as the December 1944 massacre at the Puerto Princesa prison camp, convinced MacArthur of the urgent need to save as many prisoners of war as possible before the Japanese carried out more executions while being pushed back by American soldiers. Consequently, American and Filipino guerrillas resolved to organize and launch a series of daring rescue operations to free the remaining POWs before they were lost forever. While Japanese soldiers already struggled with limited supplies, the POWs faced even more dire conditions, left starving and without medical provisions. Tuberculosis, malaria, dysentery, and other diseases ravaged their ranks. In early January 1945, the U.S. 6th and 8th Armies landed at Lingayen Gulf and Nisugbu, Batangas, to reclaim Luzon. On January 30th, a force of over 130 Army Rangers and 250 Filipino guerrillas executed a successful nighttime raid against the Japanese guards at the Cabanatuan POW camp. The raiders rescued 522 prisoners at the cost of fewer than 20 casualties, while inflicting more than 600 on the Japanese garrison. This triumphant operation prompted MacArthur to authorize additional raids on the POW camps to liberate more of his troops. As the Battle of Manila intensified and Japanese resistance hardened in February 1945, MacArthur instructed the 11th Airborne Division to undertake a hazardous raid behind enemy lines to free the last prison camp in Luzon, Los Banos. The 11th Airborne Division the prison camp was situated at Los Banos, Laguna, within the grounds of the UP College of Agriculture and Forestry. Spanning 60 acres, the camp held over 2,100 POWs and civilians captive. Los Banos was nestled in the foothills of Mount Makiling and along the northern shore of Laguna de Bay, also known as Laguna Lake. The facility was surrounded by barbed wire fences and consisted of clusters of huts where American, British, Dutch, Norwegian, and other Allied troops and civilians were detained. The 11th Airborne Division, the sole American parachute unit to engage in the Pacific, 
was led by seasoned Major General Joseph Swing, who promptly instructed his officers to plan the Los Banos raid. As the Americans prepared for the operation, the POW's executive committee at the camp, established to liaise with the Japanese garrison, authorized three prisoners to escape and contact U.S. forces to implore them to liberate the camp. The trio stealthily navigated the heavily guarded barbed wire fences, eventually reaching the jungle, when they connected with local Filipino guerrillas that guided them on a dangerous journey through Japanese-controlled territory. The Filipino guerrilla groups had also conducted their own reconnaissance missions, connecting intelligence on the camp's defenses and the Japanese soldiers guarding it. Armed with the invaluable information provided by the escapees and Filipino insurgents, the paratroopers devised a rescue plan, scheduling the operation for February 23rd. Rescue Plan The joint American-Filipino assault plan consisted of four phases. The first phase involved the 11th Airborne Provisional Reconnaissance Platoon and Filipino guerrillas. Under the leadership of First Lieutenant George Scow, the team would approach the prison camp aboard local fishing boats known as bunkas two days before the attack. Subsequently, four assault teams would encircle the camp, designate landing zones for the paratroopers, and engage the Japanese garrison. During Phase 2, paratroopers led by Lieutenant John Ringel would descend into the landing zones to neutralize any remaining forces within the camp and secure the prisoners for extraction. Phase 3 encompassed the evacuation of the POWs and Allied troops aboard 54 LVT amphibious vehicles. And the final phase entailed a diversionary attack against the Japanese 8th Division to facilitate the safe passage of the LVTs without incurring losses. This task would prove challenging as intelligence reports suggested the enemy division boasted over 10,000 personnel. On February 20th, Lieutenant Scow and 31 of his men, accompanied by around 20 Filipinos, readied for the amphibious operation to infiltrate enemy territory. The raid begins. In the chilly and dark early hours of February 21st, Scow and his platoon departed from the west shore of Laguna Lake aboard three bunkers, shrouded by darkness. Scow and his soldiers led the way, with the other boats maintaining a steady pace behind them. They were armed with M1 Garand rifles, M1A1 carbines, and Thompson submachine guns. The American soldiers navigated the river in a dispersed formation to evade detection by Japanese patrol craft. The morning fog concealed the boats, enabling Scow and the reconnaissance platoon to land near Nanhaya without complications. Upon arrival, some of the Filipino insurgents linked up with the platoon at the local schoolhouse. They then reviewed the plan once again, and Scow split his platoon into six teams, integrating Filipino guerrillas into each. The team set out through the jungle during the night of February 22nd, aiming to reach the prison camp and secure their positions. Hours later, the rest of the 1st Battalion boarded the 54 LBTs, gearing up for the attack. Just before 7 a.m., Scow and his men checked their weapons and waited for the local guerrillas to pinpoint the enemy's location. When the moment finally arrived, the reconnaissance platoon launched their assault on the Japanese guards from various positions. The raid had finally begun, and the clock was ticking before the formidable 10,000-strong Japanese 8th Division would arrive to restore order in the camp. Evacuation as the reconnaissance platoon and Filipino guerrillas engaged the Japanese camp guards from various positions, the U.S. paratroopers boarded the nine C-47 aircraft and soared into the sky. Throughout the flight, the aircraft encountered no opposition, and they quickly spotted the green smoke signals left by Scow and his team. The Japanese resistance intensified shortly after the initial assault, taken completely by surprise due to the coordinated nature of the assault. The thunderous sound of American planes dropping paratroopers from above made it unmistakably clear. The camp was under siege. Some of the POWs initially mistook the descending paratroopers for food airdrops, but the realization that they were on the brink of liberation dawned on them, as internal small arms fire enveloped the camp from all directions. A mere 15 minutes after the attack, the paratroopers began flooding into the camp through the passages cleared by the Filipino guerrillas and as bullets pierced the walls, civilians and POWs alike took cover on the ground. No Japanese soldier was spared. Each one was taken down by the combined efforts of the Allied forces and the POWs. Swiftly, the Americans and Filipinos rounded up the prisoners and prepared them for the evacuation. As the POWs gathered their meager belongings, amphibious vehicles arrived at San Antonio Beach and took out two pillboxes. Most of the starving prisoners 
were revitalized by the sight of their liberators and raced for the beach. Still, some refused to leave with the Americans and opted to stay in the village nearby. In an attempt to persuade the remaining POWs to evacuate, the Allied forces set the camp ablaze, but their efforts were fruitless. Those who refused to depart would ultimately pay a steep price for their decision. Aftermath As the evacuation unfolded, the sound of intense gunfire echoed from beyond the camp's perimeter. The diversionary force of the 188th Glider Infantry Regiment and Company C of the 637th Tank Destroyer Battalion had just initiated their assault on Highway 1 against the Japanese 8th Division. Recognizing the urgency, the Allied forces hastened the evacuation process. Sporadic gunfire from the hills intensified, and mortar rounds gradually neared the beachheads where men, women, and children were being loaded onto the LBTs. By the time the second wave of prisoners departed the beach alongside the remaining attacking forces, the Diversionary Task Force had successfully blocked the Japanese troops from advancing towards Los Baños. Over 2,200 POWs were safely evacuated without any losses. Moreover, the combined American and Filipino casualties numbered fewer than 20, whereas the Japanese suffered over 80 losses. When the Japanese troops arrived at Los Baños days later, they mercilessly took the lives of over 1,500 civilians that had refused to leave the area, as they were deemed collaborators. The Los Baños raid ultimately became one of World War II's most triumphant rescue missions, showcasing the importance of coordinated planning, accurate intelligence, stealth, and swiftness in executing specialized military operations.